power to manipulate how you feel. Then people will find that there's only one you. All I think of is, you know, how are you, you going to take over this world? I have to admit, I'm a little bit power drunk, so... Nobody remembered me from 10 years before. When I'm in the club, it's life. Sometimes I call myself a storyteller. I love to make images. I grew up in a very humble town in Omaha, Eastern Nigeria. There was no art gallery, there was no university. I'd never met an artist or a top photographer. There was a state library, thankfully, you know, and I used to read about all these artists. And they looked like, you know, fairy tales to me. Right from childhood, I've always been excited about making imagery. I started from drawing, you know, the usual making comic characters in school and Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk. I was obsessed with Marvel Comics. I always loved the effect those drawings had on my fellow kids. And that feeling has not left me. And then it's a self-sustaining energy that pushes me to keep practicing. And that is it. Practice makes perfect. I get inspired by what I see, culture, people, life inspires me. And photography is always there, you know, to tell the story. It's endless, the amount of inspiration that you can get, what you can create, that's what excites me. This journey of discovery, like somebody said, inspiration is for amateurs. You wake up, pick up your camera, you start to shoot, and then the inspiration comes from the action itself. The important thing is what is inside my brain, what I'm trying to say. That is why I want to refer to myself as a storyteller. Photography becomes a medium through which you can tell that story. The story itself is the heart of the creativity and it is about enriching your mind and having, again, the courage to be yourself. And once you are brave enough to be yourself, then people will find that there's only one you and then, you know, demand and supply. Supply questions of only one, and effective demand, infinity. In the process of my daily routine as a creative, I mean, I have all this equipment, I have all these cameras, big lenses, but a lot of times you're on the way to somewhere, you're going for a meeting, you're going for a shoot, and you spot that thing that inspires you. And you need a camera that is at hand. We we'll live in the world of now and immediately. An endless need to create content. We are doing a shoot, it's amazing. But then, you need a behind the scenes video. The phone then jumps into that space and solves that problem. And these days, the technology that we have in these phones is unbelievable. It's there for that spontaneous capture. You've got a good lens. It's got a telephoto lens, it's got a wide, super wide angle lens, and there are quite high resolution images with all the perks, you know, of real photography. It's amazing. I went out shooting with this, you know, checking out one of my locations. The dynamic range is so high, you know, in terms of getting details in the highlights, getting details in the darks and the middle tones, sharp. Beautiful color balance. The screen quality, the resolution of the screen is unbelievable. I love that. You want to see what you're shooting. It's got image stabilization. It's got nighttime mode, low light, good sound. If you want to go live, especially for people like me, I want to teach while I'm shooting. I'm doing a live broadcast straight from the phone. It's so beautiful, you know, the speed at which this phone is operating. And one other thing is that given all the work that the phone is doing, um, you're not running out of power. It just keeps going. This thing charges so fast. Two, three days, I'm still going with this phone and I haven't charged it. It's unbelievable. When it comes to all these attributes, the Techno Camon 16 checks all of them. If you'd like to win a training session with me amongst other great prizes, make a video about your passion that tells a story about your passion and what inspires you every day. Now over to you, Yomi. Wow. Thank you, Kaleshi. It's your tailor, Yomi Casual. I was a born artist, like I can paint very well, sketch very well, you know. I never wanted to be a designer. What happened then, my other sister made a mistake and she, she, she was the one that filled my jump form and she filled fashion design instead of find an applied art. 
I was born in Delta State, Worry, and I know how the guys that were born in that region, we know how we are stylish and everything. So I couldn't say I was studying fashion, like an embarrassment to say you're studying fashion, because then there was no word like designer, you're a tailor. Fashion was for women. We had like 40, 40 ladies in the classroom and five, 10 guys. Fashion school way back, you, you are not even allowed to even use the sewing machine and use the needle, needle and thread to, to stitch your, your stuff together. It all changed when um, I met my lecturer, Mrs. Brimer, and she, she, saw, she saw something in me. There was a particular day we had an exhibition and guess what? I got a standing ovation. My classmates, they came out with their works, different designs, and they showcased their works on the wrong way. And when it got to my, time, my turn, and I came out with something different. So when I came out, everybody stood up, like, who is this guy? And that was where I got all the inspiration from. Like, okay, Yomi, this is really you. This is something you can do. And yeah, so the rest is history. One thing art has done to my career as a fashion designer, it has really helped me to be different. Most of my designs are like art. An artist don't need to tell you, come get my work. When you see the work, the work is going to sell you, come get me. Me, I'm more of an abstract artist. And you know what they say about abstract? You can't really describe it, but it's unique. I'm inspired by fabrics. When I see an abstract fabric, you see most of my designs, you see, you can see a touch of art in all my fabrics. So when I see a fabric that's communicating with me, I get inspired like, oh God, what can I do with this? So I sit alone in my quiet space, try to create magic. Every day I wake up in the morning, all I think of is, you know, how are you going to take over this world? I want to be uh, the Zara of Africa. One thing I always put forward is, is comfort. If you find yourself wearing a Yomi Kajwa outfit, you're just going to feel so comfortable. I think my creative process is start from the sketch it. What fabric suits the sketch? Sometimes I have to take a picture of the fabric to see what it will look like when I do a lookbook. What I always say to young designers out there, you need to study your industry, have a knowledge in fashion, and have your own sketches. Don't copy. You should be able to create your own design. Let people know you for you. Come up with a collection. Put it out there. Announce yourself. The African fashion is very big already. It's highly appreciated. They see our works, they like our fabrics, Ankara fabrics, and the other fabrics so unique. So we have come of age and when I'm not creative, that's when you see me on my phone and that's why I'm so, so excited about this phone because of the screen. One thing I like about uh, my Techno Common Sustain as a businessman, as a creative fashion designer, is the fact that I can send pictures to my clients and it's very fast. And the picture quality is amazing. Wherever I am, be it daytime or at night, I can make good pictures and send back to my clients. The most important part about this phone is that it has a, an amazing night mode. The battery life is amazing. Like, it will last for all day, even to the next day, and you're still using your phone. And guess what? If your battery even dies, it has a fast charge. Like, in a minute, in a minute or two, your phone is already up and you're doing your stuff again. So guys, if you want me to be your mentor for two days, a techno common system phone and a fashion toolkit, all you need to do is post a picture and a short video with a hashtag CBeyond telling us a story how you want to win this amazing prize. I wish you guys good luck. I dare to express myself. You're going against the norm. You're standing out, you're daring. That's what being a rebel is. I believe it's part of my essence to give something. So I thought to myself, if my stories or my scripts are going to have my DNA, then I'm going to have to direct them myself. It was a scary thought. <laughs> because at the time, there were hardly any female filmmakers in Nigeria, hardly any female directors. 